USA and Canada played last night, Cart. This was a nice little friendly matchup with our friends above the border. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Uh, also, I don't like when exhibitions are called friendlies. Just don't like it. Not into. I don't. I don't want this to be friendly. I want some competition. I think it's a FIBA thing. It's an international thing. Like soccer friendlies are a thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But anyways, USA won. Uh, it was a pretty fun game. This was back and forth. Eighty-six to seventy-two was the final score. Uh, they played their dogs too. Like I think for the first three quarters, this was a like competitive game that yeah it was a scrimmage but it felt like a real like both teams were trying to win and then when u.s had some separation late they they pulled some of the select guys into the game and canada pulled their dogs off too but uh what did you make of this game it was a fun watch uh greg how how, how confident did i say i was that usa is winning the gold like 100 out of 100 yeah 100 yeah i still feel like this it is 100 out of 100 situation this team's just so talented man like they they stopped the whole FIBA World Cup thing. They felt embarrassed by that. And they brought in all the big dogs for these Olympics, right? And look, they start off the game extremely slow. Um, there was obviously some rust involved there. There's some questions I have with this team. But the thing is, every question I have can be filled in by somebody. Like, I have questions about Joel Embiid as a FIBA big. And you have Anthony Davis that you can throw into the fold or Bam Adebayo. Um LeBron started off very slow. You were able to throw in Anthony Edwards and guys like Jason Tatum. So it's like the team is just loaded with talent, and they did all this without Kevin Durant. And honestly, I thought they would struggle a little bit more defensively uh, because those have kind of been the issues in the past uh, couple, you know, USA games. But all in all, first time playing together, I thought they were pretty sound defensively. Like they they held – uh, Canada to, I think, what was it, 33% from the field, I believe it was, only 21% from three. Um, I thought they did a really good job. Okay. I don't know how that is the takeaway after this. I enjoyed this game immensely. Like, I'll, I'll just talk about what I saw as a fan in a little. But, uh, you know, I've been a little more skeptical of USA's, like, like I they're the favorite, but I, I don't think it's a guarantee they win gold this year. Uh, especially now that Kawhi's out and we're replacing it with Derek White, who is anywhere between the 50th and 90th best player in America. Um, I, I don't like the way this roster is being built as as weird twists and turns have happened. With that said, uh, this was a two-possession game late in the third quarter. This was, they were down 11-1 to one to start the game, and they we started the dogs for the most part. I do want to talk about the starting lineup, but like LeBron, Curry, and Beat are on the floor. You're down 11-1 and one in Canada. It, it, like and then I get U.S. was really good. Canada went really cold shooting in the second quarter, and uh, the U.S. created some separation. I think they were up eight at half, up eleven early in the third. You're thinking, oh, they're gonna run away with it. No, Canada had like an eight zero run midway through the third to keep this close, it was a five point game. So I I did not see this at all. Like I I know some people think Canada's like a medal favorite. I don't view them as that. I think this is a really good roster. Canada basketball is definitely trending in the right direction. But I'm not sitting here being like, oh, Canada's the second best team in the world. Like, I don't think they are. I think they're they're somewhere between like fourth and sixth. It's a good roster, but none of their players played more than 18 minutes last night. And this was very close. Like four <laughs> this, six. Who are the teams above them? Uh, I think the the teams with the real superstars. No, no disrespect to SGA. But oh, Greg. No disrespect to SGA. I don't I don't want to see disrespect. France. Fran- France is the biggest threat. We know that Fran- France on their home soil is the biggest threat here. Uh, I would be more afraid of both Giannis and Jokic in an Olympic elimination setting than I would be of this Canadian team. And I, they're deep. They're good, but they, they really have four players. One of those four is Dylan Brooks. SGA was great. I thought Jamal Murray looked really rusty last night. Um, Outside of that, like it's Kelly Olenek, like, I mean, that team was down five late into the third. I just, I, I don't see the takeaway of this nearly as much as like you. And I know people in our group chat, John Martin was saying the same, I, although I think he was trying to mush the U S cause he bet Canada, but like the takeaway for me is not, Oh, we're so good. We're going to waltz to a gold after like a pretty dog fighty game with Canada. I mean, we didn't play well. 
I don't think Canada did either. And I, I it was a five point game late into the third. So like, give them credit. They separated late. There was, there was some highlight moments, really fun watch. Like I said, but uh, yeah, I, I think like Canada would be a, a sizable underdog to France and this game was close. <laughs> was it? Cl- I mean, it was close at points, but like, I don't think this was a non-competitive game until late into the fourth quarter. And I guess that's that's fine, but by that point, both teams had taken their dogs off. And um, I, again, I just I would have thought like your conclusion, like oh, we're waltzing to a gold, would be like you win by thirty. That wasn't this game. This was a single digit game for most of the. Uh, I mean, yeah, first game and the first game together against a good team in Canada. I, I mean, I'm I'm also annoyed with like this isn't just aimed at you. It's the group chat because our group chat last night in a five point ball game in the third is just this team's so nasty. We're we're up five on Olenek and Brooks right now. Like we're not that nasty. <laughs> like we're good. We got some work gold, to do gold, here. Gold's coming. What'd you make of the starting lineup? It was uh LeBron, Curry, Booker, Drew Holiday, and Joel Embiid. Uh there's also the the infamous Anthony Edwards quote where uh you know Steve Kerr tells Anthony Edwards, you know, Kobe started and Dwayne Wade came off the bench. And Ant mm-hmm. looks at him and says, "Well, there's no Kobe on this team." <laughs> I love I love Ant so much. He's so cold, by the way. Um, He's the best player last night. I thought I thought Anthony Edwards oh, was the U.S.'s best. Uh, player. Yeah, it's between Ant or AD for me as the best players. Um, Both who should start, by the way. That's what I'm, the the only thing that will hold Team USA back from winning gold is Steve Kerr. We got to remember that Steve Kerr is the head coach. You Steve don't Kerr, like Steve Kerr now. I like Steve Kerr, but there's a world where Steve Kerr plays like Derek White more minutes than Anthony Edwards. I don't think that's odd. Like I, I'm scared of what he might do. I don't understand the Ant situation. Like he, he should very clearly be starting on this team, right? Like why are we trying to humble Anthony Edwards? I'm not really sure because you want to start Drew Holiday, I guess. Or I, at minimum, start him over Booker. Like, if we're starting Drew for defense, Anthony Edwards should be the starting shooting guard on the American basketball team. Right. They're probably only starting Book because he was on the – I mean, the only reason I could think is because he was on the last Olympic team. I hate the politics with USA Basketball right There's now. way too much. There's way too much. It's really gross. I don't like it. it Jalen Brown. Facts. Um, what would your starting lineup be with this team? Steph Ant. Braun, AD, Tatum, Durant when he's back, but without Durant, Durant is back. Yeah, yeah, that that's mine as well. Actually, I would I would start Tatum and definitely start AD. It's just weird. No disrespect to Drew Holiday, but like, what what are we what are we doing right Steve now? Kerr. Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr. It's weird things. Steve Kerr. Um, any concerns at all? out of this game for you like i know you're you're acting like no but you really like nothing team basketball wise that you think looks concerning at all um just like cohesiveness like a, i think playing together type things like there's a lot of times last night i think even gus johnson pointed it out like they're running fast breaks and like guys are filling the same lane or like making the wrong play the turnovers were insane last night they were really flipping the ball yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if I had to do with like the physicality of FIBA rules in Canada or what, but taking care of the ball and just being together, I think needs to be something. Also, I have serious questions if Joel B can play. Like, I'm like no bullshit. Like, he's one of the best bigs in the NBA. There's such a difference between being a FIBA big than being like just a great big. I think he slows things down. I think he slows the pace down. I think he's a non defender. Um, I just think. It, AD and Bam Adebayo should both play over him. Yeah, I straight up don't think Embiid is a FIBA big. Like I, I don't think he's a playable nah. FIBA big. So nah. I, I don't know. He's a ball stopper. I don't think he's great defensively. It's just it, and I, I we're trying to make stuff work. They're experimenting with lineups, but yeah, I, I hope that trends in the same direction you do. Uh, the last fan thing for me, it was extremely, extremely fun to watch LeBron James and Steph Curry on the same team. Rex. So cool. We like, I wish we had gotten that more through the years. And, uh, well, like, there's a clip that went around of Braun setting an illegal screen to get Curry free in the corner. I've never seen Braun try to do something so hard. 
Like he was so excited to get Steph Curry open. Yeah, it F- was F- great. Steph Brown Oop was brought a tear to my eye, man. Special, special. This is cool. Like this is probably the last time this happens for those two guys and for them to do it together. Like I, they've obviously been rivals in in a sense. And I think Braun probably wouldn't admit that. Like I think Bron Braun has always viewed it's like him and KD and maybe him and there is no parallel, but like, the reality is like Curry was a massive obstacle to LeBron overtaking Jordan. And if those two had not come at the same time, we're probably looking at both of them completely differently. And I think for them to get to share something together at the end is like one of the cooler things American basketball has ever seen. Um, And I think this is their team too. Like with all due respect to everybody else that's here, like Anthony Edwards is maybe the best player he's taking over and the like bam and ad are great and going to contribute kevin durant's on the team i like him but like this is lebron and curry's team like they're they're the faces of american basketball one more time and i think that's really cool thanks all right we'll do more olympic coverage as uh the games keep happening so stay tuned car you know what i love about you that i'm handsome you're reliable i can count on you you know honestly you remind me of aaron henry a little bit remember when like you know, their back was against the wall. Nothing was going right. And man just showed up every day. He didn't make excuses. There were no problems. There were just solutions. Sounds like me. That's you. And it also reminds me of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Because if you're looking for quality furnace repair, look no further than the heating and air experts that you can trust. Comfort and quality are their standard. They're an HVAC company that serves Northeast Indiana and Southern Michigan. Whether it's heating and air conditioning, plumbing, kitchen and bath remodeling, or emergency services when you need them most, Duncan Mechanical Solutions has reliable service that you can count on. Cart, remember when your basement almost exploded? I remember when my basement almost exploded. I remember when my, my furnace itself was acting funny. I remember when my AC was acting funny. I wish I had Duncan in my back pocket. I wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, I've never been anywhere in northern Indiana or southern Michigan that hasn't been perfectly cool or perfectly warm, depending on when the day called for. And that's because of Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Uh, They are the presenting sponsor for the month of July. Shout out to Duncan Mechanical Solutions. Go to DuncanMechanicalSolutions.com to learn more.